This video is brought to you by Timberbits. We help you create with wood. Hello folks, this project is a freestanding timber clock that I make for sale for the galleries. It's really easy and quick to make, so you can make some easy money with this project. I like this project because it deals with scrap pieces of timber like this that I don't normally know what to do with. This piece is 150 millimeters square by 13 millimeters thick. It's too small to make a box and it's too thin to cut pen blanks out of. So when I get pieces like this, I make a clock. First I square it up and flatten the boards through a thickness drum sander, which I ha have already done. Then I find the center piece of the board, or the center point of the board, by using two diagonals, like that, and then I put an 8mm hole through the center. What I then need to do is then find the, the squares from this. This is so I can mark out where 12 and 3, 6 and 9 are on the face. You can buy numbers that you stick on, don't do that. You know, you've spent so much time, well, it's such a pretty piece of timber that if you stick on Chinese made numbers, it looks pretty crappy. What I do is instead, I just put a little dot there, a dot there, a dot there, and a dot there to signify 12, 6, 3, and 9. Or, if I'm really lazy, just put a dot there to signify where 12 is. Most people can read an analog clock without the aid of numbers. I've got an 8mm drill bit in the drill press and we're just going to put a hole straight through the centre. Now for the dot, I'm just going to use a contrasting colour which is this really light bamboo skewer. So we're just going to do a two and a half mil hole. And that's pretty much all you need. And we just pair that off and glue it in. All I'm going to do now is glue this bamboo skewer into there. So a bit of thin CA and push it in. That's all it is. And then we just pair off. Two or three mils higher than the finished surface and then we'll sand it off once that's dried. So that's the clock face. Now we, we just need to put a, a back support to stand the clock face. We can stand the clock face dead true, like that, but I don't, you know, that's a perpendicular face. I don't like doing it that, like that. I like making the clock face tilt slightly back. And this is what we, we, we make. We make a wedge. Uh, you see that little gap there? Now, I try to bring it back about 5 to 10 degrees. It's not an exact measurement, just something that looks nice to the eye. Uh, that's 50 mil there. Now, this is just made from another scrap piece of wood. Uh, this is a scrap piece of black wood that I, I've got lying around, 10 mil stick. So, I make it so that that wedge is flush with the top of the clock and 50 mils out and that's it there so let's go make it grab a piece of black wood 100 mil thick or 100 mils long I then just put a a slight chamfer by putting a spacer block in and that would it's not perpendicular there. That would then, it's not perpendicular there, that'll just bring it back to a slight angle. 
Now we want that to come down to that point and how we find that measurement is, again, okay, so we've got that there, that sits back, oops, oh wait. so we've got that there and we just want to go the same thickness as the, the movement. I don't have my pencil on me. So all I do then is just grab that. So I'm just trying to do this for the camera. And that's roughly where we want to cut it. If it didn't, the first take didn't show up right, so what we've got is, uh, that's it sitting true. Now we just want it back on a slight angle, which is that. Then I've just got that there, and that's the thickness of the movement. So I'll just cut it from there, from there, to that angle there. So we'll just use it from there to there. I can cut that on the... I'm, Take that off with the table saw, but it's a bit dangerous, so I'll use the band saw instead. So we're just removing that piece there. I'll just clean that edge on the, on the sander, and I'll give everything a sand. So now that's the clock face, and we're just going to attach the back reinforcement spine to it there. That's the movement, so we'll just put that in, and we want it to sit about there. Now I'm just going to mark that with a pencil, right there. And then we use the square to transfer that down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put two dowels in there to hold that in place. I'll drill two holes and then use these transfer nails into there and then take the same holes out. And then we'll glue that in together, and that will pretty much complete the clock face. So I have these transfer punches. Now they're basically just two and a half mil welding rods for the stick welder. And all I'm doing now is just transferring the holes over to so it shows me where they are and then I'll just drill the concurrent holes there So we've got the two holes and a boo-boo, so now we're just going to glue it in. Now I've cut, again, cut these dowels to size to match the, the holes, and I'm just using PVA just to hold them in place. Camera's just in the way, so I can't really see what I'm doing. And 
extend guys in there just spread that out a bit I've dried fit it before I put it all together so it should fit in quite nicely and there it is I'll just get the the cloth to clean up that glue line but in the meantime I'll just show you how I glue up so that's just my vice and all I do is I just put a tiny bit of pressure not very much and that's all and let it dry for 45 minutes one hour and then after that we can oil it up and put the clock movement on in the next video I'll go through how you attach the clock movement onto the clock face I also show you one of the reasons why movements lose time due to incorrect insulation of the hands. Remember, if you like this video, like us on Facebook. You can find us by searching Timberbits or hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you.